Hi, I'm Brittany. I'm Keaton. I'm TJ. And today we are going to discuss with you the strategy of Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated. Oh, up? Yeah. All right, guys, to start things off, we are going to talk about the background of Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated. Okay, so Coke Bottling Company was founded in 1902 in Greensboro, North Carolina. They first went public in 1980 and renamed themselves as Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated. They produce, bottle, and distribute their beverages. They also serve in 11 states all in the southeast region. 88% of sales come from Coca-Cola products. Next we are going to discuss why we chose a broad differentiated business strategy for Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated. Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated sets themselves apart by not only offering Coke products, they began creating their own line of beverages. Here are some listed below. Country Breeze Tea, Bean and Body, and Simmer and Baza Energy Tea. They also diversify its revenue streams by reducing dependence on bottle slash can sales by increasing its sales on fountain products. Now that we've talked about Coke Bottling Company, uh, specifically to the company, uh, let's broaden it out a little bit more to the bottling industry as a whole. Um, so I'm going to talk about driving forces within the bottling industry. Four driving forces that we found in the bottling industry are increasing environmental consciousness, declining demand for soft drinks, increasing cost of raw materials, and technological advancements. Environmental issues like water consumption, manufacturing waste, and the need for recycling are becoming more important to consumers. So companies in the bottling industry, which naturally produce um, a lot of water, create waste, and distribute a lot of plastic, should definitely be aware of these issues and develop ways in which to meet these new consumer needs. Um, as people have become more health conscious, sales of soft drinks have declined, meaning a decline in a significant portion of bottling company sales um, is happening. So companies in the bottling industry must be aware of these changes as well. The price of raw materials like aluminum, resin, and corn can easily rise, which can decrease profitability in the bottling industry. Technological advancements can dramatically improve the productivity and efficiency of machinery and processes, which can put a company ahead of the rest. So bottling companies must be aware of this driving force if they want to remain competitive. Now that we've talked about the driving forces in the bottling industry, uh, let's talk about what makes a successful company in the industry. Four key factors of a successful company in the bottling industry are green initiatives, a diverse product line, efficient operations, and innovative tech. A successful bottling company will develop green practices like reducing water consumption, recycling plastic and paper, and minimizing the amount of waste in it produces. These actions will signal to customers that the company is trying to preserve Earth's resources, which will build its image. To protect itself from declining sales and soft drinks, a successful bottling company will increase its diversification to include more non-carbonated beverages. This company will distribute a greater proportion of healthy beverages to meet consumer needs. Another key success factor in the bottling industry is efficient operations. The more streamlined a company's operations are, the more productive it is and the greater profit margin it can make. A successful company in the bottling industry will intentionally assess the quality of its machines and information systems and invest in new technology if needed. Allocating money, time, and development to such technology will help the bottling company stay innovative in the industry. Now that we've discussed the bottling industry as a whole, let's narrow it down and discuss Coke Bottling's performance through a SWOT analysis. Here we can see some of the internal factors affecting Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated. For instance, they have a strong community activism by participating in youth programs and donating towards Habitat for Humanity and Wounded Warrior. They also benefit from a strong brand image by working with Coca-Cola. Some of their weaknesses, however, are lacking space for additional inventory by always wanting to appease customers and a lack of social media presence to reach a large portion of the population. Next, we can see some of the external factors affecting Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated. For instance, they have the opportunity to increase and improve their recycling program. Moreover, they have an opportunity to market to the millennials. Some of the threats to Coca-Cola Consolidated Bottling Company include chemicals in their plastic containers and the lowering demand for soft drinks overall. 
Next, we're going to examine five ratios for the years 2011 through 2015 for Coke Bottling Company. As you can see, we have examined the return on equity, the return on assets, gross profit margin, operating profit margin, and net profit margin for Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated over the past five years, years 2011 through 2015. Through these years, we can see a consistent increase throughout these five ratios. This is due to the acquisitions Coca-Cola Bottling Company has been engaging in throughout the years. This allows them to grow and see more revenue, which in turn increases each of these ratios. So Coke Bottling Company has many strategic concerns. Here we have a list of the five most significant strategic concerns for Coke Bottling Company. Okay, for our first strategic concern, Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated is too dependent on bottle and can sales. From the latest information we found, 82.2% of Coca-Cola Bottling Company's revenues come from the sales of bottles and cans. In the world we live in today, going green is a big thing in our, in our world. Everybody's about preserving the environment. Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated could potentially see an extensive drop in revenues if customers stray away from purchasing bottles and cans. Second, Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated has a weak social media presence. Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated only has 18,329 likes on Facebook and 2,041 followers on Twitter. On the other hand, Coca-Cola has 100,448,523 likes on Facebook and approximately 3.29 follower, million followers on Twitter. Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated, Consolidated could really reach out to new customers if they put more emphasis on social media. Third. They have, they have to take into account that people are moving away from drinking soft drinks. We live in a world today where being fit and healthy is a top priority for young adults. Since the majority of revenue for uh, Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated is in the soft drinks category, this could potentially be a concern they need to take a closer look at. For our fourth concern, Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated has a habit of always saying yes to fit customer needs and satisfy them. Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated does this even if they know they're going to lose money on the deal, which ultimately can become a problem. If they continue to tailor all of their customer needs and, conti and continue to lose money on these types of sales, this can be a, ser a serious concern for them moving forward. Finally, Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated does a poor job of appealing in terms of recruiting millennials for employment and just their or overall brand. Today, like I said, we've lived in an overall gr going green environment and customers do not like that the fact that the bottles pollute the air. This causes millennials to buy another product that does not pollute the air as badly or not even at all. Now that we've examined Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated's current operations, let's take a look at how they can improve operations for the future. For our first recommendation, we suggest that Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated implement a social media campaign that advertises their community activism and young employees they currently have working for them. Currently, they only have 2,042 followers on Twitter. Other successful companies, such as Coca-Cola themselves, have upwards of 3 million followers. Moreover, 35% of the population is under the age of 35. This age group relies heavily on social media to obtain their information, and so a company needs a strong social media present to speak to this part of the population. More than their love for social media, this young population loves corporate responsibility. And on CCBCC's website, since 2009, they've given over $9 million in charitable contributions to organizations such as Wounded Warriors, Habitat for Humanity, Susan B. Komen, Open Eyes, and many more. However, this is an aspect of the business that isn't well known. Coke Bottling <clears throat> would begin by gaining more followers on Twitter to support this campaign. To do this, they should get promoted tweets on Twitter. This consists of an average cost of $2,000 a day. And if they promoted it for two weeks, it would equal out to a total cost of $2.8 million. In order to help cover the cost of this new program, they should partner with Coca-Cola 
such as they do when they advertise at large sporting events. If they were to go into the cost of this half and half, this would bring down their cost to only $1.4 million. While this is still a large expenditure, over 70% of sub over 77% of Twitter users interact with a promoted tweet in some way. Considering Twitter has an average of 317 million active users, this is 244 million and 90,000 users interacting with a promoted tweet. This would give Coke bottling a huge possibility of reaching a mass amount of new followers on Twitter. And according to their most recent 10K, they've actually recently decreased their advertising expenditures. But in order to cover these costs, they could increase their marketing budget back to their historic levels in order to compensate for these expenditures. So what should these promoted tweets consist of? They should consist of things such as their community involvement and their workforce. They should focus on the community involvement to entice the young pop younger population. When they see their involvement in the community, they would not only be enticed to buy more of their products, but to be attracted as an employment option. start this campaign, they would need to employ some sort of hashtag. For example, hashtag get bottled with us could be the hashtag accompanying the employee of the day they would recognize. The employee of the day would show the younger portion of the population that already works with Coca-Cola to bring awareness to this workforce as an option. For example, they would introduce an employee, his or her age, and why they chose to work for Coke Bottling, with a link redirecting them to the website to tell them more about the featured employee. This is also where they would find a link for employment options. By doing this, you're reaching a segment of the population who has little knowledge of this option to work for the company. Our second recommendation is that CCBCC should revamp their recycling program. When one enters the company's website, he or she finds that there is a recycling program and consumers have a chance to win a prize for the recycling efforts. Beyond that information, though, there is little to no information regarding what the recycling program is, how to enter to win, what prize is involved, and how to find a recycling program sponsored by the company. Therefore, CCBCC should provide this information on the website. There should also be links to more pages on the website discussing which locations are participating, which products to recycle, and how to collect and send those products to CCBCC. This would inform the customers of the program and make them feel more incentivized to participate in the program. Moreover, if CCBCC is willing to invest a small portion of money to make their own recycling bins, they could produce these and place them next to Coke machines. For instance, the company can place these bins in the vending machine area of a shopping mall. Moreover, the company can partner with Coca-Cola and allow the employee who restocks the vending machines to retrieve the bins gather the recycled items and send them to CCBCC and place the bin back in its appropriate place. This would save them the labor costs associated with sending another employee out to pick up the bins. In this scenario, the only cost would be the cost of producing and maintaining the bins, which would produce little additional costs. Finally, to offset the cost of the bins, CCBCC should reuse the products recycled in order to minimize waste and offset any rise in the price of raw materials. For example, Kroger's in-store bag recycling program recycled 38 billion pounds of plastic bags last year. While this is a much larger scale than CCBCC, materials of this magnitude could signify cut costs associated with rising prices of raw materials. The amount of money saved from using the recycled material would offset the initial cost of recycling bins placed in areas with vending machines. And after covering these costs for the first six months of implementation, these savings would all result in increased profits. For our last recommendation, Coca-Cola Ball and Coming Consolidator should evaluate the cost-benefit of the agreements they entered into with, into with customers. When strategizing and trying to compete with Pepsi, CCBCC often finds themselves in situations where they are saying yes to a loss situation. For example, in order to introduce themselves into a market to avoid Pepsi being the only soft drink in an area, CCBCC might accept a small business's customized order that costs them more than it produces revenue. To avoid this from happening, CCBCC can weigh the total cost to sell their products with the amount of revenue they expect to receive. They should only accept offers on where they actually make a profit off of each sale they make. To do this, they should start creating a standard package for all small businesses. Instead of small businesses putting uh, in their specific orders 
and CCBCC tailoring their every needs, they can create a standard 8-pack of beverage and a standard 24-pack of beverages. Over the course of the next year, CCBCC should send a letter of notice to each, each past customer letting them know these changes. For the following year, CCBCC will work with the customers to phase out the customized products and introduce the new standard packaging. By creating two standard packaging amounts, CCBCC can uh, mass produce these and not have to worry about doing what each specific small business wants them to do. CCBCC can also save inventory space because they would be more efficient in storing the two standard offered packages. To recap, if CCBCC won an access social media campaign to attract millennials, two, revamps its recycling program, and three, conducts a cost-benefit analysis of its, consumer, of its customer agreements, then it will be well on its way to be a leader in the bottling industry. Thank you very much. Have a Coke with Freighter.